Once upon a time, long before photocopiers were commonplace, or inkjet printers were even a thing, many school children would go into a lesson and the teacher would hand out some course notes printed in a fuzzy, faded purple ink. Upon receiving these course notes, many of the pupils would immediately put the paper to their nose and inhale deeply. <sighs> If that all sounds familiar, the smell you're remembering is some form of alcohol, mostly methanol, which was used as the solvent in the spirit duplicator that produced those faded prints. According to Wikipedia, the spirit duplicating process was invented by Wilhelm Ritzefeld in 1923. Spirit duplicators were often referred to by their brand names, like Banda machines, or Bandagraph, or Ditto machines, and so on. My particular machine is a Fordograph console super, and it's very orange. And if the date on the instructions is anything to go by, it was made in 1969. The printing process involves a master, which is created by drawing, writing or typing your design onto the reverse of the master sheet, whilst it's attached to the waxy ink sheet. This transfers the waxy ink onto the front of the master sheet, leaving you with a reversed image to print from. The master sheet is then loaded onto the drum of the spirit duplicator, ready for printing. When you crank the handle, a blank sheet of paper is fed into the machine. As it passes under this metal roller, it's moistened with some alcohol. The sheet then continues on towards the drum carrying the master. The alcohol moistened paper is pressed against the master, the alcohol softens the waxy ink layer and some of the ink transfers to the paper. The sheet then exits into the paper tray and the process repeats until you stop cranking the handle or you run out of ink on the master. This system was cheap, relatively clean, well certainly compared to the stencil duplicators like the Gestetner machines, and pretty quick to create the masters and print off a few copies. The run length was somewhat limited, only being able to produce about 50 or 60 copies, and the prints got lighter as the waxy ink was used up. But the short run length was usually ideal for the average classroom size. Although most people remember these machines for only producing faded purple prints, other colours were available, such as black, red, blue and green. You could even get adventurous and print several colours at the same time, from a single master sheet, by swapping the waxy ink sheets as you drew your design. The other consumable you needed was the alcohol, or hectofluid as it was often called, which we have here. And if we look at the back, it's a mix of 80% methanol with 11.5% ethanol, and obviously some mystery ingredient for the remainder. Anyway, I think we can now have a look around the machine itself. The feed rollers can be clipped out of the way so the machine doesn't try to feed paper while you're loading the master onto the drum and then they simply rest on the pile of paper. There are these movable weights which can be adjusted depending on the type of paper you're using. It's a crude system but it works just about okay. And now if I take the feed rollers off we can look at the felt pad that applies the alcohol to the metal roller which in turn applies the alcohol to the paper. The felt pad is dosed with alcohol through this perforated metal tube. You can just about see the holes if I rotate it round a little. Interestingly enough, once you finished printing, the felt pad would be left soaked in alcohol, which would gradually evaporate, leaving the school office or staff room smelling quite volatile. To insert the master, you rotate the machine backwards until this clamp opens up in the drum, and then you simply slot the master in and turn the machine forwards to wrap it round the drum, and you're ready to go. The whole machine is very simple. I'll whip the covers off so we can take a look at the mechanism inside. 
The alcohol reservoir sits under a cover plate beneath the paper feed tray. I've had to replace all the original rubber pipes because they'd perished away into a rubbery orange goop. The alcohol is pumped in an incredibly simple way. There's a plastic bottle with a pipe on each end and a few one-way valves. When you squeeze the bottle, some alcohol is pumped up this pipe and into the spray bar that dampens the felt pad. Then, when you release the bottle, it returns to its original shape, sucking some alcohol from the reservoir. There's a manual priming button on the side of the machine that presses on this metal bar, which in turn presses on the bottle. This allows you to pre-soak the felt pad before you start printing. When you're ready to begin printing, you slide this lever to the right to turn on the automatic fluid pumping system. This engages a cone-shaped part with a cam behind the crank handle. Then, on every revolution, the cone is pushed outwards. On the other end of the metal bar is the part that squishes the plastic bottle to pump the fluid, and it's really as simple as that. There's a knob here which increases the printing pressure. In theory, running with a lower pressure will give you a longer run length before the master runs out of ink, while using a higher pressure will give you a darker print. Adjusting the knob just moves this rubber roller tighter against the drum to increase the pressure, thusly. Moving round to the other side of the machine, the drive system for the feed rollers and alcohol application rollers is yet again really simple. As the drum rotates, this cam makes contact with the rubberized wheel that spins the feed rollers. Then it moves onto the alcohol application rollers, spinning them in the same way. Once the paper has reached the main drum, the cam is no longer in contact with the alcohol application rollers, leaving them free to rotate as the paper is pulled through the drum. That more or less covers the machine and how it works. If we had smell of vision you could tell for yourselves just how strong the smell of alcohol is, but I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. So I think that will probably do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Subscription is completely free. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when new videos are released. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.